Hello and welcome to the second episode of I Hate Talking About Pop Culture. It's been over a year since the first episode because I hate talking about pop culture. But nonetheless, today we're going to test the theory that I still have a strong opinion about everything, even if I don't care about it. Look at this, Olivia Munn. She's Psylocke in the new X-Men movie. Olivia Mundane, more like. Now before we move on, I have to tell you that I have a reputation for loving every single superhero movie, including the original Ben Affleck Daredevil and the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie. I know, I have a problem. I'm having it looked at tomorrow by my optometrist. He insists he's just an eye doctor, but he clearly knows something about nerd culture because his profession shares a name with Optometrist Prime. Right. But despite my unfailing love for all superhero movies, I don't care for the X-Men movies. I'm sorry, Mom. The whole series depends on this, like, us versus them mentality, like it's supposed to be a, an allegory for racism or something. But things would be a hell of a lot easier for any human rights movement if the oppressed individuals had effing mutant powers. All the people that Trump wants to keep out of the country don't have the luxury of super strength and laser vision. And even if they did, Trump still wouldn't want them because there's no use for Storm's ability to control the weather if climate change isn't real. Also, Trump already has the blob thing covered, so... Although he could use that metal skin thing that Colossus has. This was supposed to be the setup to a joke about how Donald Trump has thin skin. Is it working? Uh... I mean, I get that the X-Men might be able to empower any group of oppressed individuals and give them a sense of pride, like, I'm a freaking superhero, even if the establishment doesn't realize it. And that's great. But I feel like the best weapon against racism and xenophobia and bigotry and all that is acknowledging that all of us are exactly the same. Except for redheads. We can breathe fire. Anyway, did I successfully talk about ethnic groups without saying something that could be misconstrued as racist? I'm sorry if I implied that your ancestors didn't have adamantium skeletons. I'm sure they are all perfectly nice, hardworking, indestructible people. Speaking of invincible superheroes, uh, Deadpool is a thing that's trending now? I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going- I'm planning on it tomorrow, and I guarantee you I'm gonna like it. And I know the diehard comic book fans are like super annoyed that Deadpool has like reached massive fame even though tons of people have never even opened the comic books. But here's my deal that everybody is probably gonna hate me for. I tentatively think that movies are better than the comic books. Every time I read about what happens in a particular character's comic book, I'm like, that's stupid. Like, I just found out from Good Mythic Morning that Batman or Superman or somebody finds out that this girl that he's dating is actually a mermaid. And in another issue, Superman finds this pink kryptonite that temporarily turns him gay. I'm all for gay superheroes, that's awesome, but what? There's also like a million different plot lines and universes for every single superhero, and every writer thinks that they're the one who's shaking things up. When superheroes aren't officially dying over and over again, they're turning into zombies, or they're passing on the suit to some other rando to put on the, the don the moniker of spider fella. I wrote a mock-up for what it feels like to me every time I read a Wikipedia page on a comic book superhero character. Commander Plasma Balls officially dies in issue so 12. So his best friend puts on the Commander Plasma Balls super suit and gets killed. But his arch nemesis General Death Skunk clones him. His soul gets transferred via a radioactive sneeze into the original Commander Plasma Balls. So he has to fight his evil twin, but then his best friend comes in and kills both of them so that he can be the new Commander Plasma Balls. Actually, hold on. Hey Siri, call the guy at Marvel Comics who like listens to new ideas and turns them into movies. I'm sorry, you don't actually own a smartphone. This voice was added in post. Oh yeah. But I will say that I do like that they're starting to make movies out of more obscure characters because it's a cash cow. But Psylocke doesn't count, so screw you, Olivia Munn. If I met Olivia Munn, my face would be like, we can't possibly have come up with every superpower possible yet, right? I mean, not that any of them are possible, but you know, possible to prefer the limits of our imagination, which there is no limit. Right? There's no limit. Maybe there is some guy in a pitch meeting with a new idea who's going, okay, he's a pharmacist by day and a crime fighter by night, and he has the ability to shoot milk from his ears. His name's Milk Ears. Arguably the most unique superhero that I ever came up with was this character, the Sleepwalker, who would fall asleep, then somehow her dreams would seep into reality, so she'd be able to do anything that she can do in her dreams, so anything, except for she's like fighting people while sleepwalking. She's asleep the whole time. In this version, I call her the Sand Woman, but she's got like a blindfold on and earmuffs. She's got sleeping pills there. That's like what she needs. To, it's like her spinach, like Popeye. Got to put the sleeping pills in and fall asleep. <sighs> now I can punch you really far. <laughs> yeah, it's freaking stupid. But it was original. Hey, wait, there's somebody commenting that they thought of that idea already. Hey, stop. Comment deleted. Blocked. Superheroes have been in the last three YouTube videos I've made. Whoops. Just kidding, it was on purpose. That's it for this episode of I Hate Talking About Pop Culture. Join me next time when I talk about pop culture reluctantly. Goodbye. Oh, I ran into the wall.